Alright guys, it is a lovely, a little bit hot and sticky. <clears throat> a little hint of the wet bulb here uh, on this sticky. It is a Sunday afternoon in the Finger Lakes of New York where uh, I am driving around aimlessly burning fossil fuels, letting the air conditioner blow on me. On this uh, Sunday, it is July 7th, 2024. So, this is sort of a part two video on uh, what started out to be getting inside the mind of Book Hermit. But uh, I decided uh, I'm going to let Book Hermit speak for himself. <clears throat> so, I did uh, the, the sort of part one but standalone video I asked the question are rising carbon dioxide emissions good for the planet's ecology and the plants on them <coughs> there is uh, we're gonna let this group of ash trees answer the question uh book hermit is one of the you know a big fan of the heartland institute <coughs> so book hermit <coughs> is of the notion uh that increasing carbon dioxide levels are good for planets and the global ecology uh, so I talked in the first uh, I talked in the first rant about which parts of that I agreed with and which parts of that statement I disagree with and you can go listen to that rant but we're going to talk about what I, I think and, and I could be 100% wrong where where this is not splitting hairs this is an entirely different uh, subject not so much are rising carbon dioxide levels good or bad for the planet but as book hermit keeps saying we need more global warming we need more global heating to solve the problem on the planet now of course where this uh <coughs> global warming global heating whatever you want to call it is coming from is from rising carbon dioxide levels so I guess if you wanted to play around with that you could call it the same question but I'm kind of separating them and uh, just wondering following it through to, to its logical conclusion uh, of course the question uh, is do we need more global warming and global heating not less as a solution to solve the problem uh, on this planet I guess depends on whether you are you know a species of earthling who lives within a certain temperature range and when the temperature <coughs> gets above a certain level then uh, the answer is a clear <coughs> uh, no we do not need more uh, global heating and, and, and global warming but I'm not <coughs> I, I mean you know speaking as a human who is driving around in an air-conditioned car uh, doing my part to uh, doing my part 
Whoa, hello, to kill myself doing my part uh, to have a head-on collision driving around mindlessly burning up fossil fuels and uh, contributing to global warming and global heating to save the planet. Uh, I'm sick and tired of this goddamn heat. Uh, but anyway, we're not here to uh, whine about my own little teeny weeny personal problems. You can find uh, all you want of my teeny weeny little personal problems on that other channel. Yes, you little collapsed trachea dog. One of my personal problems is now Sancho Panza and I both have collapsed tracheas. So I know what it means. But anyway, back to uh, the, the question at hand. <clears throat> okay, obviously in the short term, if you are an earthling, including a human that uh, needs a, yes, that needs a certain temperature level uh, to survive, then your answer is probably no, we don't. But uh, I, I've always thought, and, and, and guys, I could be 100% wrong on this. I have always thought that what Book Hermit is saying is that we need at least enough global heating and global warming to make uh, global industrial civilization collapse. I don't know whether he's going quite as far as I am. Is this a road or a driveway? And uh, saying we need enough global warming to make humans go extinct. I. I, I think what Book Hermit is saying that, <clears throat> uh, okay, so, you know, uh, Book Hermit and I are in basic agreement uh, about, you know, the problem on the planet is humans. Uh, the ultimate problem on the planet is humans, uh, but we certainly both agree <clears throat> that global industrial civilization uh, has to go that uh, every single day that global industrial civilization continues for another day it's pretty much a you know pretty much a death sentence for uh, every other earthling we share this planet with it's it's humans going around being humans that are what is destroying this planet, that carbon emissions and climate change are one little symptom of global industrial civilization or, or what uh, I, I would say is overshoot, that the problem is not, uh, <clears throat> it is not uh, sure as shit is not climate change and uh, isn't exactly uh, global industrial civilization. The problem is overshoot and my problem is I cannot go forward so I am just going to have to, I'm sorry little dog, I'm gonna have to back out that whole way I just went up while I have this rant. So this is trying to back out of global industrial civilization. So anyway, this will be quite the uh, the backing adventure. I need a four, this is not a four wheel drive gas sucking truck. So anyway, uh, I think that Book Hermit and I are in solid agreement that global industrial civilization minimally, if not just humans acting like humans, which is another way of defining global industrial civilization, is humans just going around like humans, like what I'm doing right now. We are the asteroid that if we don't stop 
if we don't stop or get stopped, we are not going to stop until we have pretty much, you, you know, obliterated every other single species of earthling uh, bigger than a mouse off the planet. We need a radical solution. We have got to bring minimally, if not humans, to extinction, which is what I would ultimately say. But uh, we have got to bring global industrial civilization to a crashing halt. And of course, <clears throat> once that happens, once we, we bring global industrial civilization to a crashing halt, then at that point, will uh, the human population, uh, you, you know, just go into free fall collapse and within a few weeks to months will be a tiny fraction of what it, what it is today and, and a lot more and a lot closer to the fewer than one billion people on this planet that we were for the first 300,000 years of our existence. So, a, you, you know, a, we have a radical problem. We have a planetary five alarm emergency. And, uh, and, and a good place to start, uh, while, well, you know, on our way to uh, figuring out a way to make humans go extinct, minimally we have to come up with a way to end global industrial civilization. Well, it, 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 I, I think even, I, I, I mean, I, again, I'm not going to put words in a book hermit's mouth. Uh, the, the, these are words in my own mouth. I, from my understanding of the tea leaves, of reading the tea leaves like I read these tea leaves, it seems to me that four degrees C ought to do it. Okay, four degrees C, uh, if not making humans extinct, four degree C rise in uh, temperatures uh, over pre-industrial, let's call it 1750, pick a damn year, uh, should be enough to wipe out global industrial civilization. So, uh, am I in favor of that plan? And uh, I, I, I fully understand what that would look like. A, uh, the, the, the temperature threshold required to bring down global in, industrial civilization is going to uh, wreak havoc on a shitload of our fellow earthlings, a, a, uh, a, a hell of a lot of our fellow earthlings are going to uh, go extinct uh, as the temperature gets warmer and warmer uh, to, you know, to what is the threshold to uh, eradicate global industrial civilization during that trajectory, there are going to be a lot of casualties. I think the U.S. military, what is that hilarious term they use? Friendly fire, that they were a casualty of friendly fire. But, you know, you have to be pragmatic about it. It is it, it, as bad as I feel for those fellow earthlings that are not going to survive the run-up in temperatures necessary to get rid of us uh, because you believe you better believe that humans are going to be fighting tooth and nail to hold on to global industrial civilization and it, 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 it's going to be an absolutely awful tragedy to watch 
and we are all going to watch it over the next few decades. We are going to sit here and witness, the, you know, the, the sixth uh, mass extinction, although I actually think it's there's been uh, more than five already, but again, we're not going to get into... Uh, into that debate whatever number mass extinction it is it, it, it's gonna suck to watch it and it's gonna suck uh, year after year getting hotter and hotter and more and more miserable and uh, until eventually you're not gonna have the option uh, to get in your gas sucking truck and turn on the uh, and turn on the air conditioner to get you out of wet bulb. Uh, so anyway, but if, if, if we don't figure out a way of getting rid of global industrial civilization and massively, massively reducing the population of Homo sapiens, which are, you know, the thing taking down the planet, we are, we're going to uh, kill every one of our fellow earthlings anyway. And the sooner we get rid of global industrial civilization, and I would take it a step further and say the sooner uh, we get rid of uh, humans, uh, exterminate uh, and obliterate humans off the face of the planet uh, is the sooner that the, you know, all of our fellow earthlings can uh, finally uh, start to clean up uh, from the mess we leave behind. Uh, and with every single passing day you know, I mean, Derek Jensen's been saying this for, for 20 years. Uh, it's not an original thought. Every single day that uh, global industrial civilization is allowed to continue, and I would say every single day that humans are allowed to uh, walk the earth, it's going, you know, that we're, we're going to continue to uh, ravage uh, ecosystems and obliterate our fellow earthlings off the face of the planet. Uh, and it's going to take that much longer for our fellow earthlings, you know, to, to uh, come together and sing Kumbaya and, and figure out how the hell uh, they're going to, uh, you know, put Humpty Dumpty back together again after he falls off the wall. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I'm in, I guess, if that is what Book Hermit is saying, the reason we need more global warming or global heating is we need to do whatever, whatever it takes to, uh, to uh, eradicate global industrial civilization uh, at, at an absolute minimum. Uh, and if, uh, if what it takes is, is jacking up the temperature enough to, uh, turkeys like that. What are those crazy turkeys doing? What, is that? what are those turkeys doing? Uh, you know, whatever it takes, there, there, there's, there's going to be some winners and losers. And uh, so before the winners can start winning, uh, there, there, there's going to be some losers along the way, and uh, we just have to face it. It's, uh, it's, just, it, 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 it's just an ugly reality, but the, the ugly reality is that uh, global industrial civilization has to go. It has to go, and 
if uh, global heating is the way to do that, then uh, I'm with Book Hermit. Bring on the uh, the global heating. So Book Hermit, did I have that at all right, or or am I completely off base that that is what you're trying to say? But if it wasn't what you're trying to say, I, I do at least appreciate you uh, putting the wrong idea into my head because the more and more I think about it, uh, the, the, the more and more uh, sensible uh, it becomes, the more sense it makes. That uh, we, we, we gotta... We got to put the kibosh on this bullshit, people. We really do. We have to put the kibosh on this shit. Uh, I mean, whatever happens to humans, fuck humans. We deserve every single thing that we have coming. Every single thing. We deserve every bit of the uh, pain and horror and uh, the, the whole apocalyptic nightmare that we have set in motion uh, that ain't gonna, that, that, that's not going to change until it, it's all, until it all comes down. So, bring it down. And it sound like Steve Bannon. Burn the motherfucker down. Burn it to the ground. Right now, while I'm waiting for global industrial civilization to burn to the ground, it is a spectacularly gorgeous, over-the-top, beautiful day uh, here in the collapse of everything in the Finger Lakes of New York, baby. And I'm going to enjoy fruits of global industrial civilization, meaning this gas-sucking truck and this nice ice-cold air conditioner blowing on me while I still can get out there and enjoy the uh, ice-cold air conditioning blowing on you well, you still can. Bye, guys.